This is by far my favorite low-budget, beginner-friendly 3D printer in 2023, the Sobol SV06. In this video, I'll show you all the essential upgrades which you should consider for this printer and some additional modifications that I applied, which make this printer finally really awesome. Hey friends, welcome back to the Crosslink channel. I'm Daniel and on this channel we talk about 3D printing, 3D scanning and do-it-yourself projects. This video is not sponsored by Solvol, but if you like to help me making more videos, you'll find all the links to the additional hardware and tools and STL files that I use to modify this printer in the video description. And if you use those links to purchase anything, that's going to help me without you paying more. Thanks a lot. Essential upgrades. Let's start with the two most important and honestly very cheap upgrades. I figured that right from the first couple of prints with this printer that the hot end cooling fan, this little fan here on the side of the hot end, is just not capable of keeping the upper end of the hot end cool enough, especially on longer prints. The result is that we get heat creep into the upper part of the hot end and that might cause the filament to become soft too early up in the extrusion system and create what we call a clogged nozzle. The solution to this is pretty straightforward. I found a modification part that allowed me to mount a bigger 5015 blower fan here on the side of the extruder to keep that part of the hot end cool enough so we can basically print forever. After this mod, I never had any issues with clogging anymore. One question that came up from one of the previous videos is how long did it take until my SV06 started clogging when printing with the stock hot end fan? And that was when I started printing things that print for more than a couple of hours, basically. Connecting this new fan to the existing connector on the extruder, however, requires some basic soldering skills. Either you reuse the cable from the old fan and solder that to the new fan, or you get yourself some JST-SH 1.25 mm connectors with pre-crimped cables and solder that to the new fan. Now coming to the second most important upgrade for the SP06, a better parts cooling fan and a better hot end shroud. Actually, I realized that I should have done this much earlier, but recently I created a few more parts that require much better cooling. So I found this awesome parts cooling duct, the Nautilus, which uses 15015 fan to push a lot more air towards the printed part than the original fan. There's even a version with two 5015 fans that's probably blowing even stronger, but I think this adds too much weight to the hot end. Does this actually make prints much better? Well, we should take a look at one of the recent mods that I printed, which is this arm for the filament sensor, which I'll talk about later. But if you just look at this area here, which was printed at 45 degrees angling up from the print bed, it looks rather ugly and clearly the cooling fan couldn't keep up, especially as this was done with PETG, which anyways requires a higher print temperature. If you compare that with this identical part that was printed after I had done the Nautilus upgrade, this is printed with the exact same print settings and looks basically flawless. So it makes a noticeable difference. I can highly recommend doing these two modifications in the first place. However, one caveat about this hot end shroud upgrade is the shroud is very close to the print surface, which makes it very effective, but it's also already started sagging down a bit because I printed a lot of PETG parts using a higher bed temperature. So the shroud was exposed to higher temperature from below and started bending down a bit. That's why I would personally recommend getting this part printed in ABS, ASA or nylon, which would not warp so quickly. Probably not printed on the SV06 unless you have an enclosure. Again, just these two upgrades on the hot end, which are basically 20 to 30 dollars or euro for the fans, make this printer 100% better than before and are probably already enough to take you through months and months of your first prints with this printer and you're gonna be more satisfied. But there is at least one more thing that you should check once you get your printer, which is whether you got a newer version from Sobol that already has a proper strain relief for the heat bed cable. If there's no strain relief yet on your version, this upgrade is a no-brainer and can be installed in a few minutes to keep your heat bed cable straight and prevents the solder connections from breaking loose over time. I would even say this is a safety upgrade. Next up, we have another practical but also cosmetical upgrade. These extrusion seals will prevent the gunk that will inevitably fall down from the print bed 
either during prints or when you clean up the print bed from falling into the frame slots here on the left and right hand side. And it also looks much cooler if you print them in your favorite color. Now coming to the upgrades regarding the original screen on this printer. If you take a look at the back of the screen, the electronics is not protected at all and I prefer not to touch it even accidentally, so I have printed a cover for it that does fit pretty well. On the front, I personally did not like the round shape of the control knob. I like the Prusa style with wings a lot more so you can turn it faster with your finger. And finally, if you're sensitive to the screen's brightness, for example at night in the office or in the living room, I suggest you print the screen cover, preferably in black filament, and it will prevent any light from leaking off the screen. So these were basically the no-brainer upgrades that are mostly 3D printable and require little or no additional hardware. But I also went a little further in the last couple of weeks and the next upgrades, at least for me, make this printer a real Prusa Mark III, if not even a Mark IV competitor. And yes, I'm talking about upgrading this printer to Clipper firmware. Now, this is not a guide how to install Clipper on the SVO6, that will be another video on its own, but I will still let you know why I did it and what parts I added to really make this a well-rounded solution, even if you're not upgrading to Clipper, there's a few things in for you. Actually, in the beginning, I didn't want to upgrade to Clipper. I just wanted to add a filament sensor to the SVO6. So I built my well-tested filament sensor that I also used on all of my other printers, even the SVO6 Plus, and modified the Solvol Marlin firmware that you can download from GitHub. So it supports the filament sensor. Basically, it's just a few configuration changes. However, I ran into a couple of strange problems with the printer thereafter. It sometimes didn't boot properly and stopped printing in the middle of prints. Completely random errors, basically. So I started investigating further into the issue. While discussing several options with the folks in the Marlin Discord server, I got to learn that Sobel made a very strange decision when they created the mainboard for the SV06 series. If the firmware would be bigger than 50% of the official board memory size, the printer would run into these random crashes. And there seems not to be any known fix for this, except keeping the firmware small enough and not enabling so many features. So at some point I gave up and went straight for Clipper, which works with less memory on the printer. I've seen a lot of comments on other Clipper videos that upgrading to Clipper is quite expensive because you need a Raspberry Pi. Yes, the Raspberry Pi was quite expensive for the last year and it's still not really cheap, but in the middle of that price hike, I found a really good alternative, the Big Tree Tech BTT Pi 1.2. It's a very affordable tiny computer, but it also has some really interesting features, which actually make it in my eyes the better 3D printer controller for everyone. It's only $37 on AliExpress with free shipping at the moment. The link is down in the description. And it's totally capable of running Clipper, even driving a Roron printer and running a USB camera to monitor your printer. And finally, it has a lot of additional connectors that the Raspberry Pi doesn't have. For example, the power terminal. You don't need an additional USB power supply, but you can connect the BTT Pi directly to the printer's power supply as long as it delivers between 12 and 24 volts. It has the option for a CAN bus interface that's usually used with Voron printers. And it has a connector for an ADXL345 sensor that is used to calibrate input shaping. But even if you don't like to run Clipper and keep your printer on Marlin firmware, it can also run Octoprint and it will add Wi-Fi and a camera to your printer for very little money. To make that BTT Pi upgrade really integrated with the printer frame, I have added a few more things. First, there is a generic Sobol backpack mount that clips to the mainboard case. On top, goes either a Raspberry Pi or a BTD Pi specific mount, and finally you, you may add a cover of your taste. Now with that, you can already go and use this printer either with Clipper or Octoprint or a combination of both, and still keep on using the original screen. But in the end, you will probably want a nicer, colorful user interface for your Clipper printer, and that's why eventually I switched to this very affordable Big Tree Tech HDMI 5 touch screen which fits nicely the other add-ons using a custom screen holder. Now, coming back to my original plan of adding a filament sensor, I made the decision not to have it sitting here on top of the extruder, but I fixed it to the top of the frame 
next to the filament spool using a custom mount that I designed specifically for this printer. The cable runs nicely inside of the printer frame and it is fixed using two more of the V-Rail covers. To monitor my prints, I'm using a Logitech C920 camera that is attached to the front of the printer frame using a printable mount. And for keeping all the tools that came with the printer easily accessible, we have this toolbox on top of the power supply. Finally, I organized all of the cables and attached them to the printer frame, either using the existing clamps or additional zip ties. Basically, we can now unplug the power cable and carry the printer around with no cables hanging from the frame. Except maybe this one cable here, which I added later to connect the BTT Pi to my camera to make high quality time lapse videos. So that have been all of my upgrades that I did for the SVO6. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing to the channel and leave a comment what I should cover in more depth in one of the next videos. That could be the steps to do the clipper upgrade, the filament sensor add-on or anything else you like to know. And remember, all the upgrade parts and STL files mentioned in this video are linked in the video description down below. So, see you next time. Have a good one. Bye bye.